Greetings, people. It's Jared here. Wolfgang One back to do another Transformers review. Um, I should have done this one uh, about, uh, should have been out and ready for about 10 o'clock in the morning, but due to working over the weekend, I didn't have enough time to film it. So I filmed it today. This is a bit of a rush job, so apologies that it's a little bit late. Um, I've been wanting this figure for about a decade. I've been waiting very, very patiently for it. Um, and today we're going to see if this review answers the question of whether or not waiting a decade for this figure was justified or not. Um, so we're going to crack straight on into this. This is the review for Transformers Takara Masterpiece Trailbreaker. Okay, so here is um, Masterpiece Trailbreaker's box. Um, it's a standard Masterpiece box, really. There's nothing really um, that interesting to uh, differentiate this between um, any of the others. Um, all the all the back is written in uh, sort of Japanese. Focus would be nice. There we are. Um, gives you an idea if just here. Gives you an idea of how well he scales with uh, other figures in the line. So you've got MPI and Hyde, the second version of Bumblebee, and the anime version of Blue Streak. Um, so he's a bit taller than Ironhide, apparently. Um, yeah, which I, I guess is, is sort of animation accurate. Now, I've been waiting um, a long, long time for Trailbreaker. I've been waiting like a decade for Trailbreaker because I loved the G1 mold, um, and I, I loved the alt mode of the G1. So... Uh, focus you fucker. So to get this through, um, to see that the old mode was sort of vastly, quite a bit different than the uh, than the original sort of knocked me for six a little bit because I was expecting it, it to be more sort of like G1 accurate. Now the reason for that is because the G1s like sort of tried to do the best between like sort of um, real life vehicles and uh, and like sort of the robot modes, um, trying to get the most out of like a, a real world vehicle. So I was expecting the camper van section here which I'll come on to when I do the review, um, to be like sort of fatter and squatter. Um, so to see that the, the vehicle itself is actually quite sort of low and uh, compact is like sort of threw me a little bit. But yeah, um, so this is this is the standard standard box, uh, number 56 in the Masterpiece line since, um, since it started, uh, nearly 20 years ago or whatever it is. Um, and in the back of the box just shows you the sort of various things that the, the vehicle and the robot can do. And uh, the accessories, which I'll come on to in a minute. So, yeah, I'm going to be dis um, disposing of this box um, after this review because I'm trying to make space. Uh, there's no point in me keeping the Masterpiece boxes if I don't have to. So, um, yeah, let's get right on and show the figure itself. Okay, so here's Masterpiece Trailbreaker in his alt mode. He's, he transforms into um, a Toyota um, Hilux or Hilux. Uh, four by four vehicle. I was going to show the comparison between him and the G1. Um, actually, do you know what? I might still do that. So if you just um, chat amongst yourselves for a minute while I get the G1 out, and you can see why I was a bit um, surprised that the alt mode didn't exactly fit the original. Um, he's supposed to be a camper van version of, of the of the Toyota Hilux or Hilux or however you're supposed to say it. Um, put that over there for now. So. So the G1 is like has a, like the fatter back. So I was surprised that the masterpiece version wasn't like that like sort of squat version. Although I can sort of see having them side by side how that does sort of translate into a real life vehicle. So I mean the I guess the G1 did what it could with what it had, um, and this is supposed to be a more ac accurate representation of the vehicle. And they sort of that's them together side by side. I'll do that in the photo gallery as well. Um, yeah, things to notice on, uh, on the MP version is it's got this, uh, this sort of box symbol, um, painted on. I wasn't, I was planning on putting like a silver one on like my G1, so I might take that off with a bit of paint at some point. Um, got a little bit of the robot mode underneath there. You can see that's his legs and that's his crutch. Um, but there is transformation process that, that are involved to actually properly make that legs, but that, that's the building blocks for them. Um, and as you can see around the back, he is quite sort of panelly and everything. And it took me a little while to um, get into robot mode and then back into vehicle mode the first time because this backpack is like sort of, once you do what you need to do, it can be quite loose and trying to line it back up a little bit is a, is a bit of a bastard. Um, let's have a look at some of the things that um, Trailbreaker comes with. So, um, he, oh shit, um, he comes with... Uh, Instruction booklet and um, sort of bio card thingy, all in um, Japanese, so can't read it. I really should learn Japanese, but for the purposes of these reviews, it seems like a bit of a shame to do that. Um, 
And I'll just try and get all the uh, accessories out of this little plastic tray. Okay, so it comes with um, two swappable faces. Let's get all this shit out of the way. Two swappable faces, one looking completely shocked and appalled, and the other one quite smug, like he's just you know, taking a shit on someone's coffee table. Um, the paint on the eyes is fantastic. In fact, do you know what? It would be really, really nice. There we go. Thank you. Um, the paint on the eyes is really nice. The sculpting's fairly decent. I saw on um, Bobby Skullface's review that this face here looked like it had a couple of lip rings where there was a uh, mould imperfection. But thankfully, my one doesn't seem to have that issue. So that's the two swappable faces. It comes with a, a green blast effect thing, which I haven't employed yet in these robot mode. Um, I suppose that does what it has to do. So fair enough. He comes with a spare hand for his um, left hand side, and that you can take off his his like little um, wrist sort of gun thing, and then you can pop this on if you want. Uh, I haven't bothered doing that yet. Um, it comes with a, a, a grabby claw thing. I'm not, I'm not sure what the fuck this is supposed to be. Uh, a grabby claw thing. You can see a slight imperfection there where it's come off the. Um, yeah, get it on the camera and focus. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Where it's come off the uh, the sprue just there, so there's a little bit of imperfection just there. And uh, again, on the other side as well. Um, I've not used this for any reason. And uh, it comes with uh, a roof-mounted uh, satellite dish antenna thing and that he used in the cartoon, I think, maybe once or twice. Um, I'll show you how to connect that in just a minute. And if you want a more accurate, um, I don't know, uh, animation version, then he also comes with this replaceable, swappable um, headlight bumper section. Um, which I thought would be quite uh, quite pox to um, get off. It actually turns out that's quite easy, so I'll show that in just a minute as well. So for scale purposes only, ladies and gentlemen, for your consideration, um, this will be Masterpiece Trailbreaker in his vehicle mode next to MP Sideswipe. Um, I'm not sure how well they scale in vehicle mode. Maybe this is correct because the Lamborghini Countach is a very, very large, wide vehicle, um, but they, they look very, very nicely sitting together like that. It's a shame that I don't have the um, the the room to display my masterpieces in vehicle mode, otherwise that would look pretty cool. But that's just for um, uh, scale purposes, uh, if nothing else. So taking a look at uh, Trailbreaker's alt mode, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's got uh, the decal in where it counts to like this little thing just here. I was kind of hoping that it would have a few more of the decals running along the door, and maybe at the top here, like the original um, stickers for the G1 did, but sadly, Sadly not. I do wish this thing would fucking stay in focus. Um, some nice paint details on the back. And this is something I do like about this. Um, is that the fact it's got Toyota stamped on the um, on the back of the, of the vehicle just there. Um, that's pretty cool. Would have been nice to be picked out a few more of the details on the lights just here, but you know whatever. I and mean, when you've gone so far as to pick out the uh, the door handle and the key section just there, and the wheels of paint silver, but the plastic tires. And you've you've even picked out the uh, the indicator section just here, but and, and on the back here, but no discernible detail on the back of the light. So, whatever. Um, so to give him his um, I don't know this little thing just here, uh, you want to pop this panel just here, okay? Uh, trouble is I've got no nails, right? So I'm going to have to use something else to do that. So we'll just uh, nail file. Um, I want to clear enough. Uh, so this little tab just here, push that back, and this should lift up the whole panel, like that. You lift that up, and then you just plug this into the top of the roof, like that. And then that's uh, Trailbreaker with his satellite dish thingy. Um, it looks alright, the satellite dish spins round, that's nice. Um, doesn't really do a hell of a lot else. Uh, well, one thing I will notice now that um, I think these two sections here, if I bring this, get out of, um, just here and here, it looks like these panels are supposed to sit in like that, and my ones don't, so I might have something mistransformed on the inside of it, so don't read too much into this shit for now, right? Uh, it's probably not a defect on the toy, and it's more probably just a defect with the owner, okay? Um, so if we want to give him his full anime look, so we push this section just down here, like that. Actually, this is something I want to show before we swap this out. You pull if you want to open up the bonnet, you pull that section down and then lift 
up the bonnet like that and then in there you've got a lot of throwaway detail that you wouldn't see otherwise which is the engine block and and all that sort of stuff that's kind of cool that's a nice detail they didn't have to include that um and for transformation if you want to flip the wing mirrors in um so the wing mirrors are out of sight in robot mode you just basically flip that up fold them in like this and then bring the hood back down um i'm probably going to leave um the wing mirrors out for the robot mode because i because those are very very small parts and i'm a bit wide that i will break it because <laughs> i don't trust myself after g1 hose head ladies and gentlemen um and this costs a lot more than g1 hose head so we're going to try and get that back in which is in itself a bit of a bastard right after much fucking about um so yeah if we want to give him his anime look we just pull this bumper down and then lift it forwards and then swap it out for the animation style one and you just clip that back in like that and then bring it forward so that'll be his uh animation style just give him his like little thing back um yeah it looks okay i mean I, I wouldn't really have it displayed like this and i probably wouldn't employ it for the robot mode either but it's, it's a nice little extra if you want to go the whole hog in terms of um tune accuracy i have a bit of a problem with tune accuracy um and the problem is is their animation errors were scene by scene in quite a lot of episodes so how how can you realistically judge what is and what isn't um cartoon accurate um but there we are so we're gonna take that back off bring it forwards try and get this bloody thing to sit down again because that's popped up there we are and then that's not sitting like it should fuck off Yeah, I'll, I'll start to cut that bit out again. Um, let's put that back on. And there we have Trial Breaker in his, in his alt mode. Um, yeah, not a hell of a lot else to say about the alt mode. It looks pretty cool. It does. Um, as I said, I've waited a very, very long time for this figure. Um, I saw the third party offerings. They were cool. I liked them. I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger on any of them. Um, and I was thinking to myself, you know, am I going to pull the trigger on this one? And I took a look at all, all the test shots and, and the robot modes that were coming out and, and all the pictures of the robot mode and that. And I just thought to myself, there's something about this that isn't sitting sitting well with me. Um, there's something about it that isn't sitting well in terms of alt mode at the moment, actually. I can't work out what the fuck I've done there. But do you know what? I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Is this the figure that I've been waiting a decade for? Um, based off the alt mode, I, I'd say I don't know, um, because I was expect, as I said, I was expecting the alt mode to be more sort of like the G1 with the fat squat back and that, but I've got to appreciate that, you know, we're, we're about 40 years ahead now in terms of toy design. Um, so let, let's have a look at the robot mode and see, and see if the robot mode is, is doing it for me. So, um, this is going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, in terms of the alt mode, you know, it, it's fine. It, it's a bit panelly up here, and it's, it's sort of a little bit gappy and sort of thing like that. But as I said, I think that might be something that I've done during the transformation process to get back to vehicle, and it's not sitting sitting well. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to do that. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, the door's open as well, but I'm not going to fuck around with that right now. Um, so let's transform Masterpiece Trial Breaker, okay? And considering, the, just want to say this, considering the size of the vehicle, and how tall he actually becomes in robot mode. I mean, the, the compact thing is pretty cool, I suppose. I mean, it does take a lot of cues from the positioning of the legs from like sort of the G1 transformation. As I said, all this under the here is, is the same. Um, but yeah, um, let's uh, let's go to robot mode. So we want to start by um, untabbing the back tail lights somehow. There we are. We want to untab those like that. And then we want to bring the entire back section. I'm trying to do this on camera is not fucking easy at all. We want to bring this entire back section out like this. 
Um, we can start by opening up the doors. Let's get the doors out of the way because they are a fucking annoyance. I'm going to have to bring the camera back a little bit for this because the, uh, <laughs> the yeah, the, the, the shit going on here. Um, so we're going to bring this whole thing forward like that. Um, we are going to uh, separate the legs just like this. And to transform the legs, it's uh, it's actually quite simple. We're going to bring this entire section forward, except that that's all back to front. So let's let's turn the whole thing around. Ignore me. Um, we're going to bring this whole section down like this, and then we are going to uh, open up the back panel just here. Somehow, right, right. This I knew I shouldn't have done this as a review. So bring the wheel out like this. Bring this panel down. Okay. Extend this bottom section of the leg like that. This grey tab here. Pull this forwards until you hear it click. Okay. Bring the wheel on its double hinge onto the inside of the leg. Close the panel back up here, and then bring this panel back down. And close it up, and then reposition the uh, the foot. And then this back part here, uh, I think you want to yeah, just bring that out for the heel spur. Okay, so that's basically one leg done. So we're going to do the same on the other one. Okay. Just like that. Bring that out, bring this forward, fold in the wheel, bring back that panel back panel back like that, close that panel up, position the foot and the heel spur. Okay, fuck it. Um, so then we then want to turn the leg at the just above the knee, uh, round the other way, and then we want to turn the figure around. So that's basically the bottom part of him done, okay? Now it starts getting a little bit fuckery. So here, we've got this entire section out like this, right? Let's get all this shit out of the way. All this shit out of the way, thank you. We get this section just here, and then we want to bring the wheels up and in like this, okay? Then the doors, um, the window section, you want to bring the window down and then fold it into the door like this on both sides and then disconnect the, the arms from the backpack get those out to the sides okay and then the doors are a fuckery unbound okay so it's not an easy way to show this on camera really uh you want to get the doors in on these hinges and then on the inside like this if you can see this great if not then sorry and then bring them down like that okay so in this is not easy there we are that always confuses me when i try transforming it back um we want to try and get the head out this is not Itself not an easy thing. Start separating the backpack like this. Disconnect the back of it from the sides because that will come into play later on. And then we want to try and get the head up through this panel just here. Okay. Like that. So get that out of the way. Ah, right. Now this is where it starts starts getting a little bit complicated. So you want to basically bring this entire assembly down here behind this section and then on a tiny little sliding pin just here the whole thing needs to slide and connect in okay so i'm going to raise the camera up like this whatever you see me do right it may or may not be right um <sighs> see the thing is the master right the masterpiece line looked very very nice right the problem is, is the fuckery it involves with trying to get them sorted out. Um, 
bring the bring the head section down, collect, collect that into place. Try to get all this to line up. So the doors want to be on the outside of the wheels, just there. And then you want to collapse the entire body down. Just like that on that sliding pin. I can't believe that fucking worked. And then all this needs to come back. And get it all into place. Get these things at the back. I don't know if you can see any of this. Uh, get the get the weapons out of the way. Fuck off. Yeah, get, get the annoying bits that used to plug in on the G1 out of the way, right? And then bring the entire backpack down. Get the back of it. Uh, fucking, I don't know. Get the back of it in, and then the back of it needs to collapse, fold down and collapse in on itself. And plug into this two little tabs just here. Right. This is what I call a fucking aggravation, right? Jesus fuck. Right, so now we're almost done, right? And this and I'm not being funny about this. This is oh hang on, I've, I've missed a step. Ha 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 Right, so these sections just here, right? Just these sections just here. You wanna fold these in, right? And then bring these sections in like this. See, the amount of fuckery, it doesn't need to be this fuckery. Now, I appreciate that this is a hell of a lot easier than Masterpiece Sunstreaker ended up being. So, you know, be thankful for some small mercies. The chances of me ever reviewing that are fucking slim to none. And then once you've got that bit collapsed in, again, bring this section underneath. And now, because I've done that, it might not want to line up properly. So, uh, so what we're going to do, right, because I'm going to lose my temper in a minute, right? We're going to do the arms, pull the arm out. Fuck's sake. Fuck's sake. Right. Pull the arm out, right, like this. Lift up this panel, flip out the little gun, bring the arm down, and then rotate forwards. And then you're supposed to be able to just... I've only ever done it once. I'm supposed to spring out like that. Do the same on the other side. Arm. Open up panel. Flip out hand. Bring down. Rotate. And then rotate the hand again. Right? Um, I can't get this to fucking... Mo oh, there we are. That wonders will never cease. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is... That's mostly him. Right? In robot mode. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Cut the camera and try and clean this up a little bit and then show you off uh, the robot mode. Okay? Because... I'm not doing this on camera. This is bullshit. Right, okay. That is Masterpiece Trailbreaker in his uh, robot mode. The robot mode looks very, very nice. It does. But I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> considering the absolute arsehole it was to transform it... Um, this right here, uh, let me let me get zoomed in on him, right? This right here, as impressive as it looks, I'm not even going to bother showing the swappable faces. This thing won't even focus now. Um, I'm not going to show the swappable faces. I'm not going to show the uh, the whatever the, whatever else comes with it because I'm getting pissed off with this review, quite frankly. Um, he's got articulation in all the places you expect to find articulation in a modern masterpiece figure. He's very, very tall, hence why I'm not getting the whole thing in camera um uh the color scheme i would have preferred black as opposed to uh charcoal gray um i'm not sure it's, it's coming through a lot darker on the camera actually but he, he is lighter than than he appears at first glance um yeah so th there he is that that's masterpiece trial breaker ladies and gentlemen um he's he's a nice figure he balances very well um he's you know articulated in, in places, as I said, that you'd expect to find articulation. Um, but because because of the, the little steps of transformation that are completely, completely pointless, like folding the side panels on the back of the vehicle and then tuck it underneath and make sure the door's in just the right place uh, behind him and then plug it in at the back, it's fucking obnoxious. 
Um, there's a there's um there's gapping issues as you can see um through his chest just there straight through here that's that's a bit annoying um there's a sort of like sort of this section just here underneath his uh underneath his arm is quite ugly and more gapping issues uh around here as well so uh, for for a high high end figure you don't really expect to see that sort of stuff but whatever whatever the case may be um I will be honest with you, as nice as he is, um, I don't think this is the figure that I've waited a decade for. Um, there's a couple of design cues there that I personally, in terms of the transformation, I personally probably wouldn't have gone with tucking up half the backpack underneath because, I mean, you've still got a hell of a backpack, and you always will do. Um, the, the breaking in, like, sort of the panels there is a little bit unsightly. I guess you don't see it from the back, so I guess that's not an issue. Um, but... All in all, uh, he's nice. I would give him probably an 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, something like that. 7.5, let's, let's, let's do that. Again, would have loved to have seen him pro proper black, but they're going for tune accuracy. Tune accuracy is not always the smartest move. As I said, there are animation errors from one scene to the next. So how you can determine exactly what is and what isn't animation accurate is, uh, is a bit of a joke to me. Um, I'm very, very glad I've got him, don't get me wrong. Um, it'd be interesting to see what it is they do to this mould to make it into Hoist, because Hoist is about fucking that tall. Um, squat fat little bastard. Um, so I'd be interested to see exactly what it is they do to this mould to justify turning it into Hoist, because they, they will have to at some point, um, to cover their expenses. Um, yeah, a decent enough, nice enough figure, but he's, he doesn't quite hit my expectations i'm not exactly sure this is the problem i'm not exactly sure what my expectations are am i annoyed at the fact that this figure is as tall as it is um is it is it the fact that it's it's the wrong color for me uh, is it steps of the transformation that don't quite hit the point I'm, I'm not sure what it is or if it's a collection of things but there's something about this figure that just doesn't quite sit well with me um and, you know, I, w I watched the comparison reviews between this and Fan Toys Outrider, um, which is the third party um, interpretation of Trial Breakers. See, the thing is that there's about four or five different versions of th third party Trial Breakers on the market, each one of them taking a slightly different design cue and a slightly different aesthetic. So not, not one of them, I would say, would be a, necessarily a definitive Trial Breaker. Um, and to have the official, uh, the official version not quite being... Uh, just right for me. I'm, I'm very, as I said, very glad I got it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it just maybe, maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe it'll grow on me. Because I mean, it has grown on me since I got it. Uh, since I watched the reviews and things like that. So, so it has grown on me. Maybe it'll continue to grow on me. Um, because uh, at the moment, I'm still, I'm still not sure. Um, decent enough figure. I do wish the, the masterpieces would go, uh, end up going back to like reasonable prices because for for this figure, uh, I paid more for this figure than I did Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Uh, and uh, Masterpiece Ultra Magnus is a beast of a toy. Um, yeah, so make 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 of him make of him what you will. Um, if you want to if you want to pick up a Masterpiece Trial Breaker, then by all means go ahead and do so. Don't let this review put you off. Um, my my ineptness to transform anything these days as I'm getting older is becoming more and more apparent. Um, this has been Masterpiece Trial Breaker. In fact, you know what? Let me let me just quickly, uh, basically transform, really, really basically transform uh, Masterpiece Sideswipe to give you an idea of what the scale is like um, for for the robot modes. All right. Well, something. <laughs> I'm glad. I hope you stuck around for the end of this because something went seriously wrong there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that's uh masterpiece <laughs> that's masterpiece um sideswipe next to trial break as you can see trial break is uh considerably considerably taller um <laughs> i'm not sure what i did there i might have to uh might have to go back and have a look at that um, but I'm not going to worry about it now. I'm going to head off to work. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this review. This is Joe Gambay, also known as Wolf Kang One, saying I'll be back with more Seven Days to Die, more reviews, uh, more Wolf Kang Lives, because um, I started doing that for a laugh for some reason. Um, so, yeah, I'll be back next week. Do hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope this review hasn't put you off buying 
uh, a masterpiece, trial breaker, or you know, or anything else. Come think of it, <laughs> um, uh, I, I can't get over a side swipe, but there we are. Um, I will be back soon. Thank you for watching. Uh, take care. Our world tomorrow.